The future of TikTok now hangs in the balance of the Senate. This after the House put forward a bill that would force the Chinese Communist Party-based company ByteDance to divest TikTok, meaning to sell it off, or within six months, or face a, a total ban here in the United States. For more, I'm joined by Peter Schweitzer, an expert on the matter. He is the president of the Government Accountability Institute, as well as the author of Blood Money, Why the Powerful Turn a Blind Eye While China Kills Americans. Uh, uh, Peter, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Good to be with you, Lydia. Thanks for having me. You know, TikTok's reach, it's clearly impressive. The company claims it has 170 million users in the United States, a majority of, of which are 34, are under 34 years old. I, I, I just literally got a TikTok uh, account because I was afraid maybe somebody impersonated me. I follow one person, my friend Lauren. Some, you know, but the banning of TikTok, the divesting of TikTok, some people see this as a free speech issue, but clearly this there's a national threat component it here. I want you to take a quick listen to FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr's take on it with a conversation with our own John Glasgow earlier today. Take a listen. Yeah, look, TikTok is a clear and present danger to America's national security. They told us for years, don't worry, U.S. user data isn't even available inside of China. Turns out leaked material showed that everything is available in China, and that's search and browsing history, keystroke patterns, biometrics, location, They've used that access, personnel in Beijing, to surveil the locations of specific Americans. And again, when they were caught, they said, all right, all right, we're going to wall off U.S. user data and not allow it to be accessed from inside China. That wasn't true either. Peter, what do you make of his thoughts? Is this a free speech issue? Is, what, do you, what do you make of this? No, I don't think it's a free speech issue in the sense that it's a platform and they're simply saying that a Chinese-backed company can't control this media outlet, um, which I think is totally reasonable. Uh, and just to add what Brendan Carr was saying, it's not just a question of privacy and the transference of information. Uh, this company, ByteDance, is joined at the hip with the Chinese state. Uh, they do joint research on artificial intelligence with the Ministry of State Security, which is their intelligence apparatus. Uh, they speak openly in China, military and propaganda officials, about how TikTok is the Trojan horse that they are using to manipulate young people in the West, uh, to change their opinions, to manipulate them emotionally, et cetera. So uh, it, it's a massive problem. And all that's simply being said to ByteDance is, you need to sell. Um, it's not as if this property is being seized. We have restrictions on Chinese ownership in other areas, uh, for example, in the high tech sector, the military sector. Certainly, I think when it comes to media companies, we have to have the same principle. So, Peter, why are people not understanding that this is not about free speech? It's not about trying to hamper people from expressing their views. It's about the company that owns it and what they are going to do with that content and potentially brainwashing as well. Americans, I mean, TikTok, the people in China, they're, the kids, they're not allowed to use it. Yeah, no, I think the concern that people raise is who's going to end up buying this? Uh, and a lot of people are concerned that a guy like Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook uh, might buy this. Um, there's no conceivable way that Mark Zuckerberg buying this would be approved on antitrust grounds. I mean, he already controls two of the largest social media apps, Instagram and Facebook. So he's not going to own this. Um, the bottom line is we have problems with all social media platforms when it comes to things about, you know, private and concerns about the effects on young people. The question is, what is easier to control and, and, and to influence uh, and to make sure that they are being regulated in a proper way with the proper political leadership? Is it a Chinese-based company or is it Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook? Um, Donald Trump's expressed concern about Zuckerberg. I get that. But if he's president of the United States, it's going to be a lot easier for regulators to make sure that Facebook is not manipulating people than it is a China-based company. Uh, this is uh, we have less than a minute left. How how uh, how much of a matter of national security is it to ha allow China, the Chinese Communist Party, to have access to our young people specifically? How much of a detriment is it? Uh 
It, it's massive. Um, Chinese military officials call it a Trojan horse. There's one analyst I quote in my book, Blood Money, is saying he, they believe that they will manipulate young people to the extent that they can defeat the United States without firing a shot. Uh, that might be hyperbole, but he backs it up explaining how they are already doing so. And I think when you look at the effects of the political attitudes of young people and the emotive state that many of them are in because of their dependence on TikTok, uh, it certainly represents a massive threat. If we're going to allow the Chinese Communist Party unfiltered access to our young people, um, I don't know what national security threat we should be worried about more. I couldn't agree more as well. Peter Schweitzer, thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. Thanks for having me.